Oh my God, you're all muddy. You're all muddy, my sexy toilet. You these Okay, I've got a confession. I thought this quarantine would be a great time for me to study and, and learn new skills and be so productive. Nope, not the case. Just lots of Tiger King and lots of doing anything else but that. Oh, uh, you don't want to take that out. Your hoe, your hoe, your hoe out of So in this video, I want to show you how to use a couple tools that I'm going to start using to remove those distractions, both for myself and my family. So actually, let's, um, let's start now. Alexa. Trigger the internet shutdown. Now, I want to challenge you, and I'm challenging myself too, and really my whole family. Sorry, family. Uh, for the next 14 days, I'm cutting out these things Netflix, Hulu, Roblox, Amazon Prime. Really, any distracting forms of entertainment I'm cutting out for two reasons. One, I want to spend quality time with my family, not just binge watching stuff. And two, I want to be productive. I want to get stuff done. I want to learn new skills. And the best way to do that is just to eliminate the distraction. So let me know below if you're going to accept this challenge. It's kind of rough and uh, I may go longer than two weeks, but for sure, two weeks. This video has two parts. The first part is for everyone. It's super simple, super quick. It's to protect your entire network, the entire thing, and to block out all those crazy distractions. The second part gets a bit more technical, gets a bit more um, complicated. We're gonna use Docker to deploy Pi-hole. Pi-hole allows us to block a lot of the ads we don't wanna see ever. And we can block it for our entire network. And we'll actually combine the use of Pi-hole and OpenDNS. So check the timestamps, see where you wanna be. Let's get started. Okay, we're gonna start out with OpenDNS. Now, if you don't know what DNS is, we're gonna talk about that now. If you already do, go ahead and skip past. DNS stands for Domain Name System, but you don't care about that. What does it do? What does it mean for you and your family and how your network works? When you get out your computer, laptop, phone, whatever, to go watch the latest Network Chuck video. Of course, right? And you fire up that internet browser and you type in your address bar, youtube.com. Take me there, computer. But then this happens, and this really happens, legit. Your computer says, I have no idea where youtube.com is. I don't know how to get there. You see, youtube.com isn't really a place. It's not a location. It's really just like a nickname. It's like me saying, hey, come over to Chuck's house. Come over to my house. Do you know how to get there just based on that information? No, Chuck's house is a nickname. You need the address. YouTube.com has a real address, an IP address, and your computer needs that address. But how does it get it? DNS, probably saw that coming, right? Check it out. Out in the interwebs, there are these things called DNS servers. And they're like the yellow pages. They keep a record of where all the websites live, what all their addresses are. So when your computer goes, I don't know where it is, it says, you know what? I know who to ask. I'll ask the DNS server. So he'll send a request saying, hey, DNS server, where is YouTube.com? And the DNS server will reply with the address, which I don't know, what is that? Let's find out. We'll watch my computer do this thing right now. Using a tool called NS Lookup in my command prompt here in Windows, I can test DNS. This right here is my DNS server. And then my computer will say, hey, Mr. DNS server, where is YouTube.com? And boom, he tells him, this is where YouTube lives. This is his address or IP address. And that's how our computer can figure out where things are based on these little common names we refer to our websites as facebook.com, hulu.com, netflix.com. Now, why am I telling you all that about DNS? Well, DNS is what we're going to use to protect you and your family from bad things and distractions. Here's how it works. What if you could have control over the DNS server? What if we hijacked it? Instead of our computer using just any DNS server, which it will based on whatever your ISP or your internet service provider gives it, we'll tell it to use Open DNS. Open DNS gives us power because we have control now. Check this out. So for example, let's say I've been watching way too much Tiger King, which is absolutely the case. I can say, Open DNS server, don't let me go there. Block that. And in a moment of weakness, which often does happen when I try to go to netflix.com and I say, computer, take me there. He'll say, I don't know how to get there. Let me ask my DNS server. But here's the kicker. I have OpenDNS set up to block Netflix.com. So the response will be, sorry, buddy, you can't go there. And the beauty of this is it's not just like one site you can block. You can block a lot of stuff. You can block categories. 
You can say any adult related sites. Block those. Or any gun related sites. Or just simply games. I mean, you can block internet games. And OpenDNS will have a ton of sites that meet those categories, those descriptions, and will block those. These are all things we can set, customize, change to protect our family and to protect us from being distracted. The best part about this, it's free, completely free. So enough talking, let's get this set up in your network right now. And speaking of free and things that keep our family safe, I like to thank the sponsor of today's video, NordLocker. NordLocker is a tool that keeps our data safe wherever we decide to put it. Wait, are you saying Chuck that my data isn't safe? Yeah. Unless you encrypt your data using a tool like NordLocker, um, anybody can see it, whether it's a photo or a video. Hackers will have a very easy time of looking at your data and figuring out what it is and, well, stealing it. Hey, you know what? Maybe you're careful. Maybe when you upload your files, everything's very secure. You upload it to places like Google Cloud and you use HTTPS, which keeps things nice and secure. You're safe, right? Well, I mean, you're safe as long as you don't mind Google looking at your stuff. Yeah, Google has eyes too. And whatever you upload to them, they can see. So how does NordLocker help us? Well, we can lock it up. Using some of the most advanced cryptography techniques available, ECC, Argon 2, AES 256, geek stuff. We can essentially put our data, our photos, our videos, whatever. We can put them in a box, locked up. And hackers or Google, Dropbox, whatever, can't see your stuff. And only people with a key will be able to unlock it and see it. So as you share it with your friends or your family, people who you want to see your data, only they can see it. Now, encrypting your data and making it safe, that's pretty complicated, right? No, it's as simple as dragging and dropping your stuff into a folder and it's safe and encrypted. You can share this via email, via Google Drive, Dropbox, and there are clients available on Mac and Windows. And did I mention it was free up to two gigabytes? Yeah, so it's, it's pretty cool. So check it out, link below, norlocker.net forward slash network chuck. Okay, let's open up our web browser and navigate on over to opendns.com. Now, notice at the top here, Cisco. Cisco bought OpenDNS back in like 2015, 17, one of those years. And y'all know I love Cisco. It's a Cisco product. And many people, when they hear Cisco, they think, ah, expensive. True, but they have a free version for us. Uh, notice we have enterprise security and then we have consumer, home people, us. Enterprise is for Cisco Umbrella. That's their enterprise version. Super amazing. It works very similar to what we're about to do with our home. In fact, if you're studying for any Cisco certifications, especially the enterprise, Encore, this is on the exam. So, hey, you're learning right now for the exam, but we're going to go the consumer route and I'll click learn more on consumer to get us set up. If I scroll down here to the middle, I have two free options. The option on the left is basically pre-configured, no customization. It's easy, simple, but the option on the right, we get to customize and, and do what we just I just showed you. So we want that option, right? So we'll sign up, click that button. Go ahead and put in your information and click on get a free account. Now this step can be kind of tricky because here's what we're doing. We need to configure and tell our computer to use OpenDNS as its DNS server. How do we do that? Well, a couple of ways. One way is to go into each computer, each device on your network and manually configure the DNS server. I don't recommend that option. It takes time and it's dumb. Don't do that. Option two, the better option, and use your home router to tell your computer what DNS server to use because it's already doing that job. When your computer, phones, game systems, TVs, whatever, need to connect to the internet, they contact this router on your home network and say, hey, I need an IP address. I need to know how to get out to the internet. And also I need a DNS server. It does that. We can tell that router to use the open DNS servers so that we have ultimate control. And here's how you do that. Right here on OpenDNS's website, they have their two DNS servers. You can use just one of those or both for redundancy. Oh, I love redundancy. And below you can choose your option. They'll actually have walkthroughs and guides on pretty much every way to do this. First, they have computers and laptops. Then we have the recommended way, home routers. If you select that, goodness gracious, they have pretty much every single router you can think of and they will walk you through the configuration. Fantastic. Now, just as an example, I'll throw up a TP-Link router here and uh, I'll show you how to configure it here. This is how most home routers might end up looking. Yours might be different. Again, refer to those guides. They're fantastic. But here I would click advanced. And what I'm looking for is right here, DHCP server. DHCP is the service of how your stuff gets IP addresses and all that stuff we just talked about. Once I have that selected, I now have the options to change my primary and secondary DNS server, which I will do right now. Let me go grab those IP addresses. Number one and number two. 
and then of course, save your configuration. Now also keep in mind, this change won't go into effect immediately for every device in your network, because right now they already received old information. They already have an IP address. They already have a DNS server. They already know where to look but they will ask your router again. They it, it expires. So usually within 24 hours, they'll say, hey, I need an IP address, give me another one, and your router will hand out the new information. Here's an IP address, and here's the open DNS server. Sucker. <laughs> now with those changes made to your router, let's make sure your computer gets that new DNS server so we can properly test things. On a Windows machine, fire up your command prompt and do IP config forward slash release to drop your IP address information. It's going away. And then we can do IP config forward slash renew to get some new info here. Now looking back at the OpenDNS page, we can actually test our configuration. It says test your settings right here. I'll click that link and see if we're actually using this. We are fantastic. Your internet is now safer, faster and smarter because of OpenDNS. Now that's not just a lot of marketing, you know, it's, it's a little bit of marketing, but it will be faster in a lot of cases. Typically your ISP or your internet service provider will give you a DNS server that might be kind of slow. You've got all your devices in your network constantly asking, hey, where's Facebook? Hey, where's Netflix? Hey, how do you get to Google? Constantly. And if the guy responding to that is slow, <laughs> it, you're gonna have a slow network. But if you get a super fast DNS server like OpenDNS, he's like, pow, 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 pow your internet will speed up, it will be faster. So now for the fun part, let's customize some stuff. Let's back up one time here and we'll go to the top right of that page and click log in. Go ahead and log in with those new credentials you put in last time and we'll see what's going on. Now, one thing I want you to notice real quick, at the top here, it says your current IP or IP address is this number. You're not gonna see mine. I'm not letting you see my IP address, I'm gonna hide that. But as far as the internet is concerned, that's where you live. That's where your computers live is the IP address. And that's how OpenDNS knows who you are. So whenever your computer requests information like, hey, where's YouTube.com? OpenDNS will go, oh, it's these guys. Let me use their configuration. So now let's configure and customize. The first thing we wanna do is add a network. It's right here in the middle, big square button, add a network, click that. It's going to auto populate your public IP address, the one that you're using right now. In most cases, this is good, this is what we want. And we'll click on add this network. Give it a friendly name. For me, I'm gonna call mine the Keith Home. And now with your beautiful network created, go ahead and click on that link right there to manage your network. The first thing we get hit with is the web content filtering, which is the categories. We can block a ton of different websites that maybe we don't want our kids going to, or maybe even us going to. Got our base level, blocking pornography. Go to moderate, some other stuff, and then go high and go crazy. I normally settle around the moderate, and um, we can even view what categories are in there. Adware, alcohol, tasteless websites. Yeah, you don't wanna see torture and mutilation. <laughs> Glad they take those out. And we'll go ahead and apply those settings. Now keep in mind, and notice that little pop-up that came up there that's now gone. Uh, allow three minutes for it to kind of propagate or exist. And that, what we just did there was awesome. I mean, you could be done at this point if that's all you want. If you wanna block just a ton of you know bad category websites, you did your job. Your, your family, your kids are protected. But now what if you wanna block Netflix and Hulu and maybe Roblox for your kids? and you wanna remove those distractions, like I'm going to right now. If we scroll down to here, manage individual domains, we get more control. We can choose what we want to always block, or maybe we can say we don't wanna ever have these sites block, like uh, networkchuck.com or cbtnuggets.com. You never wanna block those, do you? Of course not. But there are some things we always wanna block, and for me right now, I'm doing it now. Sorry, kids. Um, let's go netflix.com. We're gonna block that. It'll say, do you wanna block just the domain or categories that include Netflix? Nah, domain's fine, we'll do that. And I'll go ahead and add the rest of my stuff to the list. Now I have my sites blocked. I'll test that here in a moment. Um, let's go upstairs here a bit, <laughs> up to the top, and uh, make a few other changes. Over here on the left, we have the security option. Let's go ahead and click that. And here we can customize our protection. Now, by default, it's doing some amazing stuff for us blocking malware, botnet protection, phishing protection, basically viruses and, and, and scams online. Websites that are known for these things, it will prevent you from accessing those sites. Awesome. What's not selected by default, which I encourage you to do so, is blocking internal IP addresses. That's a networking best practice, and I'll apply those settings. And then for the fun stuff, like customization, you can change the block page that is used when someone reaches a site they shouldn't reach. So maybe little Timmy is getting a little curious and he's going to some websites he shouldn't. When he hits those websites, he should receive a block page, which you can customize and maybe scare the crap out of little Timmy saying, 
gotcha. <laughs> like, have fun with it. And then one more thing you might want to change under stats and logs. By default, OpenDNS will not keep track of where you're going on the internet, which is great. Uh, but the downside is that you don't have data or analytics on how your network is performing or where people are going where your kids are trying to access but blocked. That's the kind of stuff I would want to know. So I'm going to enable that and apply those settings. I want stats and logs. And if you do enable that setting, over time you'll have some really cool graphs of what's going on inside your network. So if I mosey on over to stats at the top here, I can see how many requests, how many DNS requests are going throughout my network, how many unique domains, IPs, what domains are being accessed. And then more importantly, you can jump over to blocked domains. That's fun. And see where your kids have been. Now, I think it's been about three minutes. Um, let's try to go to a site I can't get to. Let's try to go to netflix.com. So I'll open up a uh, private window to make sure I don't have any websites cached. And I'll try to go to netflix.com. Oh, can't get there. Blocking me, can't do it. Let's try to go to hulu.com. Blocked, can't get there. Let's try roblox.com. Nothing. And that was open DNS, protecting you and your family from a bunch of bad stuff and possibly yourself and distractions. Uh, but there is a part two I want to talk about. This will be another video because this would be way too long if I just kept talking. But I'm going to combine what we just did, open DNS, with Piehole. If you don't know what that is, you'll find out in the next video. But essentially, it allows us to block all the ads on our network. Now, you may have an ad blocker in your browser. It's a plugin in Chrome or wherever you're using, uh, but you can install Piehole in your network and it blocks ads in your entire network. It's amazing. And I installed it on my network using a Docker container because you know I love Docker. So in the next video, which might already be up, click the link right here or anywhere and, or link below and add that to your network as well. Well guys, that's about it. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button if you like what I'm doing, hit that notification bell to be notified when I make stuff. And if you wanna find out more about IT or what I'm talking about, if you wanna go deeper than what I mentioned, cbtnuggets.com, link below. Check out my training I have on there, as well as just a ton of other training we have, from Docker to Linux to Windows to Cisco CCNA stuff, we have it all. All right, I will uh, catch you guys later. Thank you.